In this video, I'm going to chat about some advanced topics in position and profile, specifically dealing with uneven tolerance zones and controlling uh, irregular features of size, things like slots. So in this first example, we've got two feature control frames controlling one hole feature. So this is a diameter. It is a regular feature of size. So we're going to be controlling the axis of the unrelated actual mating envelope, just like we would with any other hole. Now, as far as drawings go, the way you know it's not normal, again, the two feature control frames, the size dimension is left by itself. If the feature control frame was here, then it's just a, a round tolerance zone. That's what that diameter symbol at the beginning of a position feature control frame tells you. Notice there's no diameter here. Okay. So what this is telling us is we have a non-diameter, uh, non-cylindrical tolerance zone. The tolerance zone in this case is going to be a rectangle. So it's going to be 60 thousandths wide, left and right, to datum C, and then 20 thousandths wide, up and down, in reference to datum B. Okay. So the tolerance zone would look something like this. 60 thousandths wide this way, 20 thousandths this way. And then the axis of the hole, wherever it is, has to lie within that tolerance zone. Now, inspection wise, this is actually easier to check than the normal position because you don't have to convert your coordinates into that diameter, right? So if you go to check this on the plate and you're measuring from B and you get 1.01, you're good. You don't have to go any further. You can tell already that it's within that tolerance zone. Same thing in the other direction. Now, design-wise, you're taking away tolerance whenever you use a non-circular tolerance zone. The reason you'd use this is if you're designing a part that's going to mate with the part that has square tolerance zones. So maybe you're designing something uh, for a really old part with uh, coordinate dimensions, or perhaps you're designing a whole part to fit with a slot part whenever you would need a square tolerance zone or a rectangle tolerance zone instead of a diameter. The first choice should always be diameter and then if your design leads you to this it is available to, to you. So next up, so this is a position with polar, uh, a polar dimensioning scheme. So we've got an angle and we've got a radius which is kind of like a bolt hole circle so the angle controls where the hole can be in this direction. The bolt hole circle controls this direction. Notice we've got a feature control frame here of 60 thousandths and a feature control frame here of 20 thousandths with no dimension attached. So we've got a size of 0.75 plus or minus 20 thousandths. Because we've got two feature control frames in one size, we separate the feature control frames, put them by themselves, and put the size separately. At least that's how it is shown in the ASME standard. I wouldn't go too far away from the ASME standard with this kind of thing, otherwise people are not gonna understand what you're trying to tell them. If at all possible, if you're doing something complicated that's difficult to understand, get it close to what the ASME standard shows, because that's what people are going to look at to try to figure this stuff out. So the tolerance zone is going to be a little different. It's sort of a rectangle, but it's bent. So if you imagine part of the tolerance zone is going to follow this arc, right? Because that's what's limiting it. Now, part of the tolerance zone is going to be a straight line because it's related to this angle here. So you end up with an arc or a crescent shaped tolerance zone. It's kind of a rectangle that's bent. So 60 thousandths wide and then 20 thousandths wide in this way, but it's got to follow that bolt circle. Okay. So again, on the plate, when you're measuring, you're just seeing where your axis is, and then you can figure how far it is away from here. You can figure how far it is left or right. So not too bad to inspect. You, you might use this if you have a, a part that, you know, you have more tolerance in one direction than the other. Say this is mating to a slot, it might matter to you 
more that the part is aligned in this direction than this direction. So that kind of thing can happen all the time. This is a way to achieve that. So next up is an irregular feature of size. So this is an enclosed feature, this slot that we're controlling with a profile. Now, this is usually pretty easy to understand. The problem is it's the most restrictive way you can dimension a slot. You're saying the, the surface of the slot has to be within a 20 thousandths profile boundary that goes around the true profile. So you're really saying you got plus 10, minus 10, all the way around, and it's related to the datums. So the slot has to be the right shape, and it's also got to be located to whatever datums are in the feature control frame. So it's the easiest to understand and the easiest to put on a drawing, but it's going to be the most restrictive to manufacture and difficult to inspect unless you have a CMM. Remember, a profile control controls the whole surface of the feature. So it's not good enough if this part is two inches thick. To, you can't just put it on an optical uh, comparator because you're only seeing one side at a time. The best way is to have a CMM probe go in there and measure and make sure uh, nothing is off. The other downside is you can't use the MMC modifier. So profile always applies regardless of feature size. So if the purpose of the slot is to clear a bolt, Right? The slot could get bigger and still do that. There's no way to reflect that with this particular profile scheme. So let's move on to the next profile scheme. Here we have a more difficult uh, feature control frame to understand, but it gives manufacturing more tolerance to actually make the part, but it can be more difficult to inspect, again, unless you have a CMM machine that'll just figure it out for you. So what this is saying is that the slot has to be within 60 thousandths to A, B, and C. So that's locating the slot to the datums. But that 60 thousandths is a wide variation for, let's call it the shape of the slot, the form. This 20 thousandths down here says that the, pro, the slot has to be, the shape of it has to be within 20 thousandths, but only to A. So A isn't shown here, but imagine it's the, the flat surface you're looking at here. So A just controls the perpendicularity of the slot to this surface and then the form of the slot, so general shape of it, but it's free to float within that 60 thousandths larger tolerance zone. What this does, the slot is going to be good to within 20 thousandths, but it can be off location a little bit. That has all kinds of uses if something is fitting in that slot but it doesn't fit to any of the datums, you can give more tolerance to the slot. This happens all the time with things like engine blocks that have a whole bunch of different bolt patterns with unrelated parts, right? Those uh, work really well with composite tolerances because another reason, when they go set this up to make it, it's not as important to locate it, which is time consuming in manufacturing, but it's generally easy to make a slot to size, right? They're gonna just stick a three quarter inch tool in there and cut across. So you can save in manufacturing costs, sometimes inspection, and it's, it's a good way to design things if you're pretty sure people are gonna understand what you're trying to tell them. So let's move on to the next one. All right, so this will throw people for a loop. So you wanna make sure whoever you're sending this to has a copy of the ASME standard to break this down, aside from me explaining it in this video. This has a profile and a position combined. So the profile is going to be larger. It's saying that the slot can have a wide variation in its shape, so think of it as form. But there's a position boundary that the slot can't encroach on. So let's talk about what the actual maximum material boundary would be. This would be the size of the gauge you would use to check the part. In this case, we're gonna subtract this size, 0.75 inches. We're gonna subtract 60, subtract 20. So 80 in total, that's gonna give us 0.67. That would be the size of the gauge. That's the area that the slot 
can't encroach on. What this does, if you're designing and you know the mating part is a certain size, you can set it to that. But it allows the outside of the slot more tolerance. The advantage to this system is that you can use basic dimensions with profile to allow a good bit of form uh, and general shape error. But you can also have the MMC symbol with the position and then control the, the minimum size of the slot for mating parts. Okay? Uh, it's, it's not recommended to use this at regardless of feature size because it would be difficult to inspect. It, it wouldn't make as much sense. It, basically, just use this with uh, MMC. Okay? So this is profile and position combined. Next up, we've got position all by itself. Now, this is pointed to the slot and we've got size uh, plus minus dimensions controlling the size of the slot. What this does, and this boundary right here is optional, it used to be required. What this is saying is that the boundary follows the shape of the feature, so the true uh, size of the feature. So whatever's on the drawing, these lines, and I forgot there should be two times R on here to let you know their tangent radii. So the boundary is the MMC size. So from left to right, it'd be 2.98 minus 0.2 would be the size of this boundary. So you could make a gauge to check this part. Again, a CMM machine can do it pretty easy as well. That's what the boundary concept is, as opposed to controlling an axis or a center plane. In this example, the axis and the center plane doesn't matter. You're controlling the minimum size of the feature. The maximum size of the feature is controlled with the size dimensions, okay? So let's move on to our next one. This is a single position. We're gonna do two positions to control it unevenly. So in this case, we've got a position here and a position here, both the MMC. This is gonna invoke the boundary concept without, I didn't write boundary under each one. It's a little more obvious in this context. So you've got less tolerance up and down and more tolerance left and right. So the left and right, we're gonna take the MMC of the feature, 0.298, subtract uh, 60 thousandths is give, give us 2.92. That would be this dimension. And then the radii just shrink evenly, okay? And then we do the same thing in the other direction. 0.75 minus 20 thousandths minus 20 thousandths would be this dimension, okay? So you're giving uh, less tolerance where like a bolt might fit through, but more tolerance in left and right where it might not matter quite as much. Again, you're using the boundary concept, not controlling an axis or a center plane because it's an irregular feature of size. You know, it's conceivable that you could get rid of this, right? Just have this position and you would be controlling the center plane and then the ends would be controlled by size limits. That, that is another technique you could use. Uh, if you wanted it to be boundary, just write boundary under the bottom. Uh, it can get tricky. Again, I would stick to what the ASME standard shows, uh, otherwise people are gonna get really confused or just leave a note and let people know exactly what you're looking for. So that's it for this discussion. Just a couple ways to control irregular features of size or control regular features of size in uh, giving uneven tolerances in either direction. You can use position, profile. It depends. If you're gonna make a hard gauge for this, you might wanna use position with the MMC, although profile is typically easier to understand. It also depends on your inspection capabilities. If you have a CMM machine, you can basically do whatever you want, but if you're working in a place where they're gonna check this on a plate, you, you might wanna use position because it's gonna be easier to inspect. Okay. So if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Check out the channel for more videos coming soon.